Jean, could you tell me why this collection that you have done since 89 is interesting, this collection of African art? Well, I hope it's interesting. If not, I wasted the 30, <laughs> 30, years of, 30 years of my life. I think it's interesting because it's a completely different kind of collection. Uh, usually people have on their walls uh, paintings that other people recognize. They have in the old days, they used to have a Renoir or a Cislet. Then uh, they had a Warhol and a Liechtenstein. Now they have perhaps a Richard Prince or something like that. I had no uh, interest in trying to show uh, the same collection as all of my other friends. I was interested in uh, making a collection that was completely different. And when I started 30 years ago, nobody had any uh, contemporary art whatsoever. And that's what I spent a lot of time and a lot of energy putting a collection that is completely different than anything else you could see. And what, what is interesting is after 30 years, now museums come to me uh, from the uh, Tate to the uh, MoMA in New York. They say, oh Jean, can we do something together? And I said, why? I said, well, we kind of did not see this African art. So now that's why it's so interesting to do this uh, show the the Vuitton Foundation because uh, uh, Suzanne and, and her team has put together an, uh, an incredible show and I think it will show uh, th this collection in, a, in, a, in, a, in an interesting way, in a, in a very uh, elegant and interesting way of showing this art that is quite, quite special and not very many people know what it is. But when you look when you look at it, when you look at the past of this big collection, what does it show in your intimacy? What, what does it mean for you, this well, African art? For me, it means a lot because 99% of collections of people, usually they have a gallery that helped them or they have uh, some kind of uh, art advice or something like that. In this case, it's a completely singular collection that nobody else has. And I love having things that nobody else has. It's a very particular collection, you know. Uh, it's not, uh, you go into any hedge fund guy, you, you always see the same thing. No other hedge fund guy on earth has a collection like mine. But like you spoke about Volonti, uh, how, how those artists were very strong to be artists in Africa, right? In terms of... To human a, experience. Oh yeah, to be an artist in Africa is a really difficult, it's a difficult job. First of all, when we started, they had no material, so they had to find the paint, they had to find the canvas, they had to find, you know, they used to use paint that would for paint cars, the canvas were sacks of potatoes, or sheets, the, some of them, like Bodhis Kingales, would find pieces of cardboard on the street, uh, Bully Boisbray used to use the back of a shampoo box, it was, you know, and, and ballpoint pens. It was incredible. And then you think, in America, the, the artists they have air-conditioned offices and five assistants helping them with everything they need and all that. So the the the, the just on the side of the work, the energy and the strength that they have to have was remarkable. But what I really liked that it completely came from their imagination. They didn't know who Clifford Still was. They didn't know who Liechtenstein was, they didn't know who Wall was, they didn't know who Picasso was. And that I find incredible because everything you see on the canvas on the work really came from their head or from their ancestors. It didn't come by walking around, uh, you know, the Louvre or, or the Pompidou or something like that. That's what I, I and I'm sure they had very few books in it. Now, things have changed now with the internet. Obviously, somebody in Kinshasa on their cell phone. Uh, they can look at Richard Prince's latest show if they really want. But we decided to just show artists pre the arrival of internet in Africa, which we think is around 2009. That was the reason. Merci, monsieur.